astronaut John W. Young is a man who sets the pace. When he was in the Navy, he set world records in time to climb speeds for jet aircraft. And in his NASA flights, he has racked up a large number of firsts, reaching a peak in the challenges facing him as command module pilot of the moon orbiting Apollo 10 mission. Young was born in San Francisco and later moved with his parents to Orlando, Florida, where he graduated from high school just 40 miles from Cape Canaveral. Years later, the Cape's John F. Kennedy Space Center would be the launch site of the Gemini and Apollo missions that would bring him fame. But first, there were years of preparation. A straight-A student, he graduated from Georgia Tech with a bachelor's in aeronautical engineering and was commissioned in the Navy. As a Navy test pilot, he not only set speed records, he evaluated weapon systems, such as the F-8D and F-4B aircraft. He also became maintenance officer of Fighter Squadron 143 at Miramar Naval Air Station in California. His selection as a NASA astronaut came in September 1962, when he was one of the nine men chosen in the second group of space pilots. Another two and a half years of space specialized studies and training qualified him to be the pilot, along with command pilot Gus Grissom, on Gemini 3, the first manned flight of the Gemini program. Gemini 3 was launched on March 23, 1965. Not only was it the first multiple manned flight for the United States, Grissom and Young accomplished the first modifications of an orbital flight path. During three flawless revolutions around the Earth, Gemini 3 changed its orbit three times, firing its engines to modify both the plane and the path of the trajectory. Young fed the necessary figures for such changes into the onboard computer. He tested some new space foods and a new waste disposal system. The mission also was our first control re-entry using lift characteristics of a spacecraft. Landing was 60 miles short of the designated point due to error in the wind tunnel studies made prior to the mission. So even the wide miss in Gemini 3's flashdown served the purpose of correcting landing calculations for future missions. In all, as astronaut Young reported to President Johnson after the flight, the only thing wrong with it, it didn't last long enough. Young's next space mission was as command pilot of Gemini 10. His record of space flight firsts continued. Gemini 10 was launched on its three-day mission on July 18, 1966. With his pilot, Mike Collins, astronaut Young maneuvered the spacecraft to a rendezvous with the previously launched Agena 10 vehicle. The two spacecraft were then docked together. The maneuver sharply reduced the fuel supply of Gemini 10, but this was no great problem since the fuel and propulsion systems of the Agena were now available to propel the joint spacecraft. He fired the Agena's 16,000-pound thrust engine to make major orbital maneuvers and to achieve an altitude record to that date of 476 statute miles. It was the first time in spaceflight history that a spacecraft docked with another vehicle and applied its systems to propel them both. After more than a day and a half, Command Pilot Young undocked Gemini from Agena 10. Another first was achieved when Young and Collins maneuvered their spacecraft to a second rendezvous, this time with the passive Agena 8, which had remained in orbit since its primary mission four months earlier in the year. Agena 8 systems were dead, so this was the first rendezvous accomplished in space without help from an onboard radar signal from the target vehicle. After 43 orbits, with only 20 pounds of fuel remaining in the Gemini 10 tanks, astronaut Young began re-entry.
splashdown on this, his second mission, was well within eye and camera range of the prime recovery ship, the carrier Guadalcanal. In addition to flying two Gemini missions, astronaut Young had served as backup pilot for Gemini 6. As the Apollo program accelerated and manned flights began, Young again gained the invaluable training that comes from being a member of a crew on the ground. He was the backup command module pilot for the first manned Apollo mission, Apollo 7. His fellow crew members were the other two men named to the prime crew of Apollo 10, spacecraft commander Tom Stafford and lunar module pilot Gene Cernan. The three would soon be circling the moon together. In setting his speed records in an F-4B aircraft, the young John Young had climbed to altitudes of about 2 and 16 miles. The designers of the Apollo 10 mission plan an ascent somewhat higher for the more mature John Young. It's about a quarter of a million miles up to the moon, and Apollo's velocity at times reaches 25,000 miles per hour. The Apollo 10 mission was designed to give the command module pilot his most critical hours after the spacecraft attained lunar orbit and the lunar module separated to descend in an elliptical orbit to within 50,000 feet of the moon's surface. Young's job was to maintain the command module in stable flight, stay in touch with Stafford and Cernan in the other ship, and be ready for any emergency. It was possible the command module would have to become the active vehicle to rendezvous, dock, and rescue the men from the lunar module. No one knowing John Young had any doubts that he was the man to handle such tasks. As the space program continues with men landing and exploring the moon on several missions, and with other space flight developments such as manned orbiting space laboratories, John Young's pace will be something for upcoming spacemen to emulate for years to come. Thank you.